Yeah. Yeah, well, things are a bit easier for us dustmen now, like, you know, because, like, these plastic bags are a bit lighter than your old dustbin. tortoise. Terrestrial member of the reptilian order Chelonia. The tortoise is protected by a casing of horn-covered bone and they vary in size from just a few inches to several hundred weight. And it has been known for the tortoise to have a lifespan in excess of 200 years. But perhaps the most interesting fact about the tortoise is their insatiable and instinctive desire for bonking. <laughs> Since they crawled out of the oceans all of those millions of years ago, the tortoise has evolved into the most productive and efficient sex machine in the animal kingdom. Just put a male tortoise next to a female tortoise, and within seconds the male will mount the female in the simmering fit of unbridled tortoise passion. Yes, before you can almost blink, the two tortoises are at it, hammer and tongs. <laughs> Once the male smells the alluring scent of the female, his sexual organs become aroused and mating is imminent. The male has mounted the female, then turbulent, one might almost say violent copulation takes place. <laughs> Identity is a problem with the tortoise, but uh, once it's established, who should be on top? Well, they bonk away like like two tortoises. <laughs> Population can last anything up to whew, 10 seconds. And then an amazing thing happens. And this is the one trait that the tortoise has in common with man. After copulation, he dismounts and flakes out. <laughs> and likes to wind down with a lettuce leaf. <laughs> Which, as a matter of fact, leads us very neatly into this. How was it for you? How was what? <laughs> Fantastic bargains, incredible offers, and everything, yes, everything must go. This beautiful three-piece suite, this fantastic fitted kitchen, this superb hi-fi unit with matching cocktail cabinet, and everything must go, yes, everything must go to my wife. Everything must go to my wife because she's divorcing me, and she's divorcing me because I talk like this all the time. <laughs> The twist. Incredible! And take a look at this! A matching pair of three-year-old children. Hers, whether I like it or not. So come round to my house today for the super once-in-a-lifetime divorce sale. Yes, you can lose it all at Decree Nice Side. <laughs> the whole thing was an absolute scream, and we heard it till dawn. And then last week it was even worse. We were dubbing a Yugoslavian film into English. Spanking Slavs, would you believe? For Peter, you remember Peter? The one with the earrings. Yes, that's right. And he turned to me and had the temerity to suggest that somehow the hell thing... OK, was... loves. Hugo, Miriam, ready on the red light? All right, Des? Yeah, ready, John. Right. Hot six kitten in Bangkok, English dub, C7, take one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Carlos, I can't stand this tropical heat any longer. I'm going to take my Christmas. Let me do it for you, my darling. Oh, Carlos, faster, Carlos, faster. My dress is off. 
Now for yours. <laughs> Carlos, hurry, Carlos, hurry. I'm so hot. <laughs> mm, that's better. Now, kiss me, Carlos. Kiss me. Again, all over my body. <laughs> Take me, big boy. Feel my throbbing body. <laughs> to the bed, over the bed. sent another letter. Except this time I'm going to use it first. <laughs> yes, you've heard them on trains and buses. Now 20 solid golden Walkman hits from the fabulous Walkman brothers. Like Uptown Girl. How is she Did it his way. The Walkman brothers do it their way. Final curtain. Certain. I did it. Sing along with the Walkman hits of the 80s. Lucky, 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 lucky. The fabulous Walkman brothers. And the beat goes on and on until the batteries run down. Lucky, 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 lucky. Excuse me, don't I know you? It's Terry, isn't it? Terry Dutton. Uh, well, I never. Terry Dutton, how are you? Hello there. How are you? Fine. And, uh... Oh, uh, this is Cheryl, my fiance. Cheryl. Hello. Charmed. I say, Terry Dutton getting married, eh? Who'd have ever believed that? Don't expect too much tonight, darling. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, it's only fair to warn the girl, isn't it? I mean, Terry does have his little problem. Yeah, all right, thank you. Terry, I don't know. I'll tell you what I mean, darling. You'll find out soon enough. Mind you, you could be the one to cure old Terry of his problem, you know? You look as though you've been around a bit, probably think of him as a bit of a challenge, eh? Oh, oh, is that the time? I think we'd better be going. No, no, wait a second, Terry. I'll just be a second. A bit like you, really, eh? <laughs> Just leave us alone. Cheryl and I were hoping for a quiet night together. Oh, you'll have a quiet night, all right, Cheryl. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, look, must push off. Lovely to see you again, Harry, and uh, keep your pecker up. <laughs> Where on earth do you know him from? He's been the family doctor for years. <laughs> Are you sure that this is the one you want? Absolutely sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll take it. <laughs> As house prices continue to soar across the country, it's becoming almost impossible for first-time buyers to purchase and furnish their first home. But Mr Jones of Romford has come up with a rather ingenious scheme. <laughs> Mr Jones, tell us a bit more about it. Certainly. Uh, about 15 years ago, I started to think about the amount of bodily waste we reject during the course of a year. You know, like, clippings, fingernail clippings, mucal secretion, near wax, that sort of thing. And I worked out that in the average year, the average person probably gets rid of enough bodily waste to fill a four-door Morris Marina. <laughs> so, well, it's about 20 hundred weight, actually. So, uh, anyway, my wife and I decided to keep all ours and, uh... We built this house out of it. <laughs> Cost of 35p. 
<laughs> Mr. Jones, this living room carpet with the rather lovely Indian motif, what's it made from? Well, actually, my wife weaved that from the little curly hairs she found in our bed and in my underpants. Quite <laughs> <laughs> enchanting. It's, it's very, very wiry, isn't it? Oh, don't touch that, I think that's my wife's. <laughs> Point taken. What interests me, Mr. Jones, is <clears throat> what are the main ingredients that went to create the walls and ceiling in this particular room? Well, this wall is actually made from a combination of earwax and toenail clippings, <laughs> plus the little, little flaky bits of skin you get with athlete's foot, you know. <laughs> and the binding agent was provided by my wife's rather severe bout of food poisoning. <laughs> Gorgeous. <laughs> Maybe you could give me the information here on how long it takes a perspiration and dandruff to harden to the consistency of this rather handsome coffee table. Uh, well, we were quite lucky in this case, um, in that my father-in-law donated to us the proceeds of his bronchitis. <laughs> <laughs> How generous. Well, people have been very generous. Uh, Mrs Fitzpatrick across the road, for example, she had the, um, the operation. The, um... Yeah, that operation, yeah. And she gave it all to you? Yes, yeah, she did, yeah. And what did you make out of it? You're sitting on it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, time has beaten us again. So, from Mr. Jones and myself, good night. <coughs> <coughs> Do you want that? Sorry, I just swallowed it. Bastard. <laughs> if you want the best, then don't fit this stuff. <laughs> That's what I call a genuine British cup of tea. Thank you, sir. Ah, thank you. That's two teas and two scones. That's just £28.30. <laughs> American Express? <laughs> That'll do nicely. American trousers. They say more about you than credit cards ever can. <laughs> Listen to me, Lou. Listen. You just tell that son of a bitch to go straight to hell. Hey, can you come over here a minute? Uh, listen, Lou, I don't need this shit at the moment. Now, just tell me, who's number one? Is it me or is it me? Yeah, well, just do it, fat man, and get back to me. Hey, Jack, I've written a new song for you. I think it could be a hit. Okay, give me the words, give me the music. Uh, can I just sing it for you? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, just go ahead. Okay. <laughs> For many years, I tried to say that we don't get along. I never could say it to your face, so I wrote it in a song. That's a really nice intro there, Hank. That's good, yeah. A piano player's all I am, while you're a household name. I write your hits, arrange them all, and you get the acclaim. It's a really nice tone. You said you'd share success with me, but what you really meant was you'd take all the glory, all of the girls, and I'd just get 5%. <laughs> hey, these lyrics are really good. Yeah, I like the words. First chorus, Jack. Okay. Oh, Jack. Oh, Jack. Stabbed you in the back. <laughs> Just yesterday, I had your wife and your daughter in the sack. Hey, what a great song! It, it seems almost real, you know. I sold your sordid story to a national magazine. I told them of the drugs and the mafia, the sheep and Vaseline. <laughs> Really great song there, yeah. yeah. Second chorus. Yeah. Oh, Jack, oh, Jack, <clears throat> you won't be coming back. My coup de grace 
was the cyanide in your early evening snack. So what do you think, Jack? Yeah, um, it's just something about that last chorus, you know, Hank. You okay, Jack? You look a little wobbly on your feet there. No, no, I'm fine. Uh, yeah, uh, I just want to do something to that last chorus. Um, just play it again. Okay. Oh, Hank, oh, Hank, you've got yourself to thank. I swapped the cups round and it was the poison one you drank. <laughs> Yeah, that's real good, Jack. Um, <laughs> can we try it just one more way? Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, we both made a big mistake. I may have drunk the poison tea, but you ate the chocolate cake. <laughs> Looks like we've come to the end of the road, Hank. But look on the bright side. My funeral is going to be the one that gets all the press coverage. <laughs> Asshole. You may not be aware of this, but Ron here is a great fan of Mickey Mouse. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so if you think Mickey Mouse is stupid, Ronnie has got a message for you. Yeah. It's difficult to laugh when your lungs are in a blender. <laughs> your Majesty. Raleigh. Your servant, ma'am, returned this very day from the Americas with many wondrous objects indigenous to the New World, nearly before seen in this fair realm. Then we will see this curious assortment, my dear Raleigh. But I warn you, if we are not impressed by these novelties, then your head will grace the gates of the tower this very day. I am with confidence, ma'am, that these strange articles will both amaze and fascinate your royal personage. Then proceed, my dear Raleigh. First of all, ma'am, allow me to be the first to introduce you to the... More chips, ma'am. <laughs> To the what, Raleigh? To, to the, uh... To the pin cushion, ma'am. Pin cushion? Yes, ma'am. A revolutionary new aid to the seamstress or needleworker. Uh, one simply loads the pin cushion with pins, then place handily under the chin like so, thus leaving the hands free to concentrate on the sewing. Edgar, tell the executioner I'd like a word with him, will you? Certainly, Your Majesty. No, please, wait, Mom, for I have more wondrous objects that will delight Your Majesty. For your sake, I trust they are more impressive than the pin cushion. I have in my hand a number of beans. <laughs> beans from a plant called the... Coffee, Mom. <laughs> What sort of beans did you say, Raleigh? Uh, cough drop beans, ma'am. Uh, they dissolve in the mouth and quickly soothe the throat of any irritation. I fear it is your throat will be sorely irritated, Raleigh, if you continue to disappoint me thus so. I beg your indulgence, ma'am, and ask you to consider my next a truly amazing object. A strange leaf, native to a place called Virginia, Known by the local Indians as... Oh, shit. <laughs> Known as what, Raleigh? Toilet tissue, ma'am. What? Um, an item of personal hygiene, ma'am. One simply hangs it on a nail next to the... Enough, uh... sir. You're obviously a lying scoundrel and you shall pay with your head. Edgar. The guards, ma'am? <laughs> no, no, please wait, ma'am, for I have... One more item of novelty, one which I know will delight your majesty. This is your last chance. For you, <laughs> my dear queen. Oh, perhaps I have been a little hasty. This truly is a magnificent gift. <laughs> it is called a banana. Uh, 
banana. Yes, ma'am. It's a tropical fruit of the South Americas. You mean you eat it? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Guards, take this dog to the tower. Mom, I can explain. Please, please, please. Yeah, people might snigger. But I've got a lot to thank Mrs. Thatcher for. I mean, if it wasn't for her, I'd still be director of finance for the GLC. <laughs> It was a cold and moonless night. <laughs> In the distance, a wild dog howled. <laughs> howled. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no one heard the key turn in the lock or the heavy oak door swing open. I did. No one heard. <laughs> The stairway echoed. Echoed, echoed, echoed. <laughs> Would another victim fall prey to this strange, overwhelming force? <laughs> <laughs> Jocelyn, a young, beautiful girl in her early 20s, was frightened. She had the sheets. What? <laughs> She had the sheets pulled over her face for <laughs> some kind of reassurance. Her mind a churn. <laughs> with the strange events of the last 24 hours. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Why had the Count begged her to stay? Why do you think? <laughs> Why did he look at her in that strange way? I've got a pretty good idea. <laughs> why, oh, why, oh... Spell yo-yo. <laughs> in the faint arc of light from her flickering candle, she saw the door handle move. Or was it her fancy? Ooh, fancy. <laughs> no, very slowly the door pushed open. Hardly noticeable at first, but now a full eight inches. <laughs> Her heart pounded. Boom, buddy, boom, buddy, boom, buddy, boom. <laughs> As the candle went out. <laughs> of a strange presence in her room. As she strained... <laughs> As she strained to see... Right. She could just make out a ghastly shadow. Uh, it's Aunt Marvin! <laughs> <laughs> it came closer. Closer. She could now feel the warm breath against her neck. <laughs> that white, vulnerable neck. A voice whispered. Do you order in a minicab, darling? <laughs> Yes, I suppose you could say I am appealing. <laughs>